So, you want to know when the next Forbidden List is coming out? Well, I actually have the answers. Konami normally gives us a Forbidden List two weeks before a set or two weeks before a next major event. That's really interesting. There's something really interesting about two because you would want it today and that would mean that we would have it plentiful in twos. Couples normally come in twos. What does that mean? That people normally group together in twos. There's also something else that happened too. Two weeks ago, Callie had his Twitter hacked. Now I know what you guys are thinking, but Callie and Konami couple two group that means that they aren't together on this meaning that the nft was to be able to get the prediction list before it happened tomorrow what also does that mean ycs las vegas cali lives in vegas that means that the forbidden list will either come out two weeks before Las ycs las vegas or two days after ycs las vegas i'm not crazy you're crazy going on with ya big dog and it is update monday it has been one year in nine months of kicking rheumatoid arthritis ass boy i gotta say rheumatoid arthritis has been getting his ass beat but twitter i mean they've been winning in case you guys didn't know i did have my twitter hacked two weeks ago and uh if you want to buy some nfts your boy is apparently selling i haven't been able to recover my old twitter account so i went ahead and made a new one be sure to follow me at cali effect on twitter i got the memes i got the spice and of course i got the prediction list a lot of people were wondering Jay, what is the Today, I'm going to be sharing with you what should happen, what needs to happen on a prediction list. But of course, if you guys think that I'm loco, go ahead and let me know down below in the comment section. I'd love to see what you think is going to happen. Without further ado, big dog, let's go ahead and talk about banned Yu-Gi-Oh cards. These 100% need to happen. So there are two really big problems with Yu-Gi-Oh right now. One is that it is a tier zero format with tier elements being considered as the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh. The second is that Yu-Gi-Oh is insanely power creeped right now. It feels like if you were not playing any of the new strategies, why even play? I think when done correctly, power creep can be a good thing. Take for example, how Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring is no longer a game ending Yu-Gi-Oh card, but I also think it could be a bad thing because no one wants to see the same deck over and over and over again. I mean, seriously, I'm getting tired of making tier limit jokes. Sight, you can say that this format is terrible. My guy, this whole format has broken my rhino heart. Overall, I hope we leave into a better Yu-Gi-Oh meta. With that being said, let's go ahead and address some of the hugest problems inside of this prediction list. Konami definitely needs to do that. And the first card that needs to be banned is unfortunately instant fusion. I was completely 100% right when this card was initially limited. And it's actually really simple why this card is a banned candidate. The extra deck is a resource that you often use and requires multiple monsters to be able to gain certain effects. You basically trade off versatility, being able to have an out to every given situation by giving up multiple cards and instant fusion pretty much bypasses this. Now, what actually makes this a little bit more busted in Photon Hypernova is that we're getting a card called Triple Tactics Tasking, which could essentially search instant fusion, which is a God card for tier elements. Also, we already got our replacement. We got Retort Fusion. You can special summon monsters from the extra deck at home. Now, personally, I would say Konami just stopped making busted level five and lower fusion monsters, but you know they don't think like that. That would actually make sense. Another card that I think should be banned is a card that I had on my perfect forbidden list. Now, do not mistake this video from the last week's video. This is actually an attempt to figure out what Konami is going to do with the forbidden list. And oftentimes they hit cards that are way too late and sometimes cards that don't even make sense to us. That means that Wind Barrier Statue is a prime card to be banned, 
but I wouldn't put past Konami to limit the card because that's just how competent they are sometimes. One thing that I've noticed a lot about the TCG list is that it's monkey see monkey do and will win barrier statue being banned in the OCG in Master Duel. I think that that's probably something to follow. On top of that, not only can the Flundery strategy search and summon the wind barrier statue, the cast tier strategy now can too. All they have to do is exceed summon into the Raid Raptor exceed monster and boom, free barrier statue in a special summon heavy deck. Wind Barrier Statue functions pretty much like World Oppression and Vanity's Emptiness, and you know where those cards sit on the Forbidden list. And lastly, for the cards that I have Forbidden, I'm actually pretty iffy on this. I feel that if Konami thinks that Cash Tira is too powerful, they'll address Cash Tira, just not in the ways that you would hope. A lot of people would say, Fenwa the one, hit Fenwa the card of busted. I'm not going to disagree with you. It's a Cyber Dragon that can banish a card and then search another Cyber Dragon. That's pretty good. But we know that's not how Konami rolls. The last time that Konami has went after core theme cards and completely killed them was in 2020, coming after the Eternal format, which hit Solomon Great, Sky Strikers, and Damien and Dex alike. And you guys already know what happened after that. COVID happened. Does Konami really want another COVID? I'm not saying that the pandemic happened because Konami hit those cards, but if you touch my fire boy again, well, I got a load of Zubats, Crobats, and the other bat Pokemon to release. With that being said, a hit to the cast chair strategy without hitting the cast chair strategy would be in order. I think banning number 89, Diabolicis, the Mind Hacker, would be a perfect way to do it because this card does enable cast chair to be able to disable all of your opponent's zones. To be fair, I'm not even sure if Konami would do something like that because they've already allowed toxic strategies like Runic to be able to run around and deck your opponents out, maybe following some of the other mechanics that nobody likes to play against, like locking out all of your opponent's zones, would be something that they'd really be interested. It. Can't wait for that Exodia FTK strategy. Good job, Konami. Ooh, damn. Yeah, definitely. Let's not play Yu-Gi-Oh. Let, let's play with ourselves. I can do that on the hub. But if Konami does turn around and hit the cast tier strategy, I definitely think that there will be more hits to tier limit and it won't be tier limit. We already talked about how hitting the tier limit cards would probably be a no-no for the Yu-Gi-Oh and the TCG, strictly because that's just not the methodology that Konami decides to do, which I actually think is a great idea. Yeah, great idea. I got that release button on deck, boy. With that being said, if you want to sell Photon Hypernova effectively, slowing down tier limit to at least meet Cash Tira's expectations or force people to pick up Cash Tira and other decks might be in order. With that being said, a nice middle ground is to hit the Ashizu cards because they're completely fucking busted and should have never existed in the first place. Tip Though I will give it to Konami, giving us the Ishizu cards to completely warrant a perfectly good Yu-Gi-Oh format, and then taking away the Ishizu cards makes it look like they actually did something to address the problem when the cards should have never existed in the first place. Moving on to semi-limited, if we preemptively hit Cash Tira and then we hit Tier Limit, then we have to hit Sprite. I don't think that there's going to be anything huge, just maybe Sprite Starter to semi-limited. This will be able to limit the consistency of the Sprite deck while not making it overbearing. It's still going to be a pretty good deck going into the next format, and then when Sprite gets more support in the near future, then they'll probably bring Sprite Starter off the three just to be able to promote Sprite. This is definitely one of those least suspecting hits that no one sees coming, and I'm banking on Konami to make a good amount of those. Now, of course, Konami has to throw us a couple of bones to make us feel better, at least make us think we're feeling better, and I 100% think that making a heart like Dino Wrestler Pinker Tops come from limited to semi-limited is one of those feel-good moments, because Dino Wrestler Pinker Tops brings up so many great feelings of us as Yu-Gi-Oh players, but ultimately, it doesn't do enough in this format to actually change the Yu-Gi-Oh card game into our favor. I'm not going to lie, this move can just be completely hopium as Konami does get me excited for at least one thing, so I got to make sure that something happens, right? From there, to help their new Gold Pride TCG exclusive and to make us players feel good while also promoting the amazing Defender set because there was some Warrior support in it, I think Reinforcement of the Army comes off from 1 to 2 in this particular list. This also falls in line that we actually did get a Collector's Rare printing of this card. This is something that is completely off left field and players would love until they realize that it doesn't do enough at this current time right now. I know I seem completely jaded right now about what Konami is doing to us right now, but every single time they 
do it to us. And I'm sick and tired of being treated like some redhead stepchild, Konami. Treat me like Master Duel. Don't treat me like Master Duel. And lastly, for Semi-Limited, a card that I wholeheartedly think will come to Semi-Limited, if not Unlimited, will easily be Mind Control. The reason why I say this is because last format Konami tested this would change your heart coming off of Forbidden to Limited. It wouldn't make any sense for them to bring change your heart at any more copies and then have Mind Control, an arguably worse card on the Forbidden list. I think that the Semi-Limited will get a little chunky because there's like two cards currently on Semi-Limited. Cold by the Grave joins this list because it's an excellent answer to Tier Limit. It's actually the card that should have came off the Forbidden list, unlike Dimensional Fissure and Macrocosmos, though those cards probably shouldn't have been on for that long and could potentially address those graveyard decks yet again while also hitting hand traps and would make cash tier stronger in theory so i think it hits almost four birds with one stone and lastly for unlimited oh my god cards that almost don't matter I think one for one is a good candidate because it did get a reprint in Amazing Defenders. Upstart Goblin can 100% come off the list, especially with the way time rules are. It wouldn't surprise me if a card like Spellbook Judgment also comes off the list because Konami has peep game from Master Duel on the OCG. Blackwing, Steam the Cloak, and Astrograph Sorcerer are definitely cards that do not move the needle over here. Hey, y'all remember when we said that Steam the Cloak was going to be broken? Remember? Pepperidge Farm remembers. And then lastly, there has to be some cards that'll have people go up in arms and thinking that these decks are probably the best decks. So I'd probably give it to Solomon Great Gazelle because the card shouldn't be on there at this long. And then Red Rose Dragon, because what is Red Rose Dragon without Christian Hockley Fibrix? My brothers in Christ, he died on the Link Cross for your sins. Can we please have Glow Up Bloom and Red Rose back? And as well as the other tuners. Thank you.